What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. I kind of want to put this out there, and um, it really made my really made me think. It made my eyes open. Um, Nick Trigilli and Seth Rossi made a video recently, um, just talking about all kinds of shit, right? And you know, Seth is a good friend of mine, has been for a long time. Nick, I don't really know personally that well. Um, we're friends on like social media and stuff, but by them making the video, it actually spawned me to look at myself and look back at my past and make some connections and make a timeline that. I didn't even really fucking know what was happening. So I've had people tell me, oh, Jerry, I started watching your YouTube in 2012, 2011, 2013. Like, you're so much different now. Like, you know, you, you were so edgier back then. You were like fucking yelling all the time and pissed off and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, you know, I, I kind of chalked it up to I'm getting older. I'm 42 now. I'm not like whatever the fuck I was back then. But I chalked it up to like maturity, right? I'm getting more mature. I handle myself differently. Um, I just give a shit a lot less about certain things now that I did back then. And um, I just kind of chalked it up to that and really didn't think much about it. But when they started actually talking, um, you know, Nick and, and Seth both talking about the, um, the drugs and how they affect your, your frame of mind and how you think and react and stuff, I literally traced it back to the time that I started taking steroids was really the time that I got out of control. And all the years I was like, no, no, they don't have any effects on me. Like, well, I lost my fucking hair. Like, they, I would say like, oh, they don't have any effects on me. But here's the thing. It's like people that um, that eat a lot of junk all the time, right? You don't really know you feel like shit until you clean up your diet really well. And I don't mean diet for sure, but you clean up your diet. You're not eating as much junk and you feel great, right? And then you put some of that shitty food back in your body and you feel bloated. You feel gross. Like your stomach hurts. Like you feel sluggish. You didn't know you felt like shit until you actually cleaned your body out. It's the same fucking thing with the drugs. Now... I was a happy-go-easy kid, you know, I was just fucking doing my thing, I was mischievous, I got in trouble, but I wasn't an asshole, I definitely was not an asshole growing up, and then through my teenage years, again, I was easy-going, happy-go-lucky guy, whatever, you know, when I became a bodybuilder competing, I was 17, 18, 19, competing as a natural teenager, again, you know, happy-go-lucky, was an asshole, never, I wasn't really getting into fights and shit like that, nothing like that, right, 20 years old, I started taking steroids, and my first couple cycles were, I mean, they were really modest, really moderate. I mean, they were low. You know, one cc of test for 10 weeks. In the middle, you go up two cc's, come back down. Um, first few cycles were like that. And then I started adding more and more compounds. I started getting bigger. I started getting stronger. Then more compounds, stuff like the Russian D-ball, which was like in the little elastic with the insert. Um, you know, trembolone acetate, parabolin, um, you know, real anadrol from Syntax, um, and then homogenins from Brazil, like shit that was extremely high power compared to the shit that they have nowadays, right? In about 20, 21, right? 21 years old, probably about a year after I started that, I was offered a job at a, a, a bar as a bouncer for my cousin. And I was so amped up and I was so happy that I'd be able to fight for a living and just punch people in the fucking face and just fucking just be a dick. I couldn't wait. I jumped at the opportunity. That's where it began. It began when I started fucking taking the heavier doses of shit and I was getting an attitude. I was being an asshole. I was like snapping at people. You know, me and my parents would fight all the time. Me and my brother would fight all the time. Friends that I had that were, you know, through high school, I was no longer friends with because I was a fucking asshole. It didn't dawn on me, right? I just thought everybody else was a fucking dick. I thought I was the one that was normal. Meanwhile, nobody around me changed. I was the one that changed. Now, fast forward, I'm doing all the steroids throughout the years, and I am having fucking issues. I'm having fucking issues controlling myself. I'm literally getting into fights all the time just for the fuck of it, just because I feel like it. I remember um, one time living in Bristol, my Jeep got stuck in the snow. I couldn't get to the gym. And my mom and dad were at like a yard sale, and they bought me this bench in case I get stuck at home, I could lift at home. And I didn't have any weights for it or anything yet. I picked up the bench out of the garage. I was so mad. I was like, I was literally in like a rage, but I didn't consider it that because... I was like, you know, I was just mad because I couldn't get to the gym. And I picked this bench up and I actually fucking bent the bench into like, I just kept bending it and bending it and bending it and bending it until it was like a fucking hunk of metal, like a pretzel. And then went out in the front yard and I fucking threw it in the snow. And my parents come home and see this thing in the front yard. They're like, what the fuck is that? And they're like, oh my God, I think that's the bench. Like, what the fuck happened to it? They thought I ran it over with the car by mistake or something. They're like, did he pull in the garage and hit it and then pulled out? And like, they, they had this whole thing in their head. It wasn't me going crazy. And I had punched a hole through the fucking door, like, just out of control. I would punch holes in walls all the time. I would throw fucking things around the house. And I just thought it was just me being, like, angry and expressing myself, right? Well, 2012, competing, you know, when I started YouTube in 2011, the dosages were only that a lot of the shit I was getting was fake. 2012 came, I amped it up a little bit. In 2013, I amped it up again. 
So those years, 2012, 2012 and 2013, I was on, for me, what is a decent amount of shit. I mean, I'm sure people out there would be like, ah, it's not that much. But for me, it was a decent amount of shit because it was real. It wasn't this black market shit. It was pharmaceutical. I was still getting real drugs. And that was that edginess, that anger, that fucking, that person that you guys saw. Now, don't get me wrong. My personality is still like that. Like, that guy's kind of under the surface, but he never really comes out. It's like the Hulk, right? Like, you're under the surface. He's pushed back. And if needed, like, that dude comes out and fucking shit pops off. But it's not there all the time. And it's harder to get that guy to come out. And I don't automatically think violence the first thing that comes to my head, right? I don't automatically think fucking, you know, just go on a fucking tangent and rant and go fucking crazy like I used to. And I thought it was just chalking it up to, you know, um, just getting more mature. You know, fast forward to now, 2018, you know, I also went through a period of time where my hormones were fucked up because I was trying to come off all the drugs and you're completely fucked up, guys. Like if you're doing drugs for that long and you're taking massive amounts of shit, whatever you consider massive amounts, and you decide to come off, your body's going to go through a period where you're fucked up. It's not really, some people get depressed. I didn't really get depressed, but I kind of just didn't feel good. You know what I mean? Like I kind of felt like shit. I didn't, it was just a fucking weird time. And then I get in Titan Medical's program where they leveled out my hormones and made me normal again. And I feel great. And I'm like easy to fucking deal with. And I'm having fun all the time. And there's a different me on fucking YouTube. And people are like, well, he's so calm. And, you know, people equate it to Aaron, you know, because I met Aaron and all of a sudden I got calmer. Well, that was a point in my life where, you know, I was off the steroids, right? I was coming off all that stuff. I wasn't on massive doses of shit anymore. So I was starting to calm down because my body was leveling out. And even though I was having a hard time with, uh, you know, the, the TRT and the HRT, you know, it was still leveling out to the point where I could think clearly and not fucking go out of my skull. And I really started looking back and I was like, holy shit, like that whole period of time, like it literally was fueled by the drugs that I was on. And I honestly thought that they had no, because I didn't know any different. When I started them, I started out slow. So it wasn't like I turned into the fucking asshole all of a, like, you know, all of a sudden it was like, I kind of built up to it. I became an asshole over time by adding more and more dosages. And like some of it is in your head. Some of it is absolutely hormonal. Like in your head, sometimes you feel like, well, I'm fucking 250 and I can bench 500. Why the fuck do I have to wait in line for anything? Fuck all these motherfuckers. I can kill them all. That's your attitude. Now, you know, even if I could bench 500 now, I'd be standing in line and be like, well, this sucks. All right, maybe I'll do some emails on my phone. You know, that's where I'm at now. But, you know, I, I got to step back and I feel so fucking dumb for not recognize it, recognizing it and so fucking dumb for not putting two and two together it wasn't, I mean, you know, yeah, I've matured a little bit, but still, I'm like a fucking eight-year-old most times. Like, I think farts are funny and burps are funny, but bottom line is, like, that aggressive fucking asshole that was around is not there anymore. I stepped back, and I was like, holy fuck, and it didn't dawn on me until they were talking. Nick and Seth, they were talking, saying, yeah, this happened, and I was a total fucking asshole, and I said things, and I, I'm listening to Nick going, holy fuck, and then I, like, as soon as the video was done, I went and started looking back at myself and started piecing things together, and I'm like, holy fuck, he's right. You know what I mean? Like, this really does make an impact on you and you don't know it because it happens so gradually. All of a sudden you're in the fucking middle of it. You just think it's your personality. You just think it's who you've become and you think it's fucking cool when you're young. You think it's cool to be an asshole and punch people in the fucking face and break ribs and shit. You think that's fun, right? At 42, you know, when you've come off all that shit, you're like, why would I want to hurt someone like that? I mean, do I want to punch someone in the face that wants to hurt me? No, I don't want to. I'll do it anyways, but I don't want to anymore. You know what I mean? Like it just really really kind of, uh, you know, fucking hit home. And like, once I sat down and started to put the timeline together and piece together that people said after 2013, I really started to change. Well, that's when I started to stop taking all the shit. Like that was it. When I decided to retire from bodybuilding, that was my last show in 2013 at the Sean Ray Classic. That was it. I came off everything that was fucking taken, all that crazy bullshit that I was taking, the massive dosages of stuff, the DNP that I tried, all of that shit fucking was just done at that point. And, um, I got to say, and this is kind of a fucked up thing, my life got better and better when I got off. I literally was able to interact with people and push myself to learn, right? To learn, to be a good guy, to help others rather than being a selfish prick like I was for all those years. Really kind of fucking hit home, but I never would have figured it out, honestly, because I really kind of didn't really think much about it. I kind of put it in my past. I said, this is where I'm at now. That was in my past and didn't think too much about it, but I was like, holy fuck, they're right. You know, so I think these videos that Nick and, uh, you know, I saw Boston on there, Seth on there, I think they're a good thing. I think that, um, you know, there are some points I don't necessarily agree with, with everybody, right? I mean, there are things that we don't necessarily see eye to eye on. But overall, I think talking about this stuff, and I've been talking about this stuff openly since 2012 or whatever, whenever I started doing it on YouTube, I've been pretty open about drug use, what I used, you know, things that I did, what I think about it. Like I have um, videos up about... Um, 
Trumbolo and Clamuto or whatever the fuck else is on there. But bottom line is, guys, you know, these guys are telling the truth. Like, if you think this stuff doesn't do anything to your psyche, you may be taking a little bit and it's not doing much. But these guys that are delving into some heavy drug use and some heavy-duty shit that are in the bodybuilding world, it is affecting your personality. It's affecting who you are. It's affecting those around you. It is absolutely affecting you. And you may not care, and that's fine. You might be like, you know what? I don't give a shit. Cool. You know, whatever. But if you're in the spot right now where you're looking around, you're like, why the fuck is everybody making, you know, making a big deal out of me? Tell me I'm an asshole. What? Fuck them. And like, it's you against the world. Maybe it's not the rest of the world. Maybe it's you. Biostertraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biostertraining.com is the blog. It might you be your biceps, so get off that shit, and we are 